Seed Nerds and No-Till Nuts, I'm the Rascal Farmer and welcome back to the No-Till Lab. We've got a busy show today. We're going to do some work on the greenhouse. I actually did some filming yesterday. Pulled out the router. I uh, <coughs> took care of the uh, rounding the edges of the boards. Um, we're going to put up the track today for the uh, wiggle wire along the top. Um, plant maintenance. We're going to walk around the greenhouse, check out the ladies. Um, we're going to lose the blue dream today. <laughs> going to whack it right down. And not because I don't like it. I don't like it. It's self-pollinated. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I posted it up on my Instagram yesterday. I got hairs turning brown already. I don't see any nut sacks. I don't see any nanners on it at all, but uh, I do have pistols turning brown, and that's never a good sign, especially now. So we're going to do that. We're going to check out the Mendo Dopes and the Zaria Locos. I actually brought them out, and they're uh, spending another day hardening up down there in the outside greenhouse. Um, I've been able to sex out some more males. Males, 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 more males. Yeah, I've got, uh, what, the uh, first four that I've been able to sex of the Mendos are male. And I think I've got three males on the Zario Loco. So I went through and I hit them all this morning with Spinosad. Um, I've probably got one more spray of Method 1 that I'll do next Sunday. And then they're on their own. But I found two caterpillars last night. And one was cocooned up on my favorite code black. So I went through, mixed up some spinosad this morning, first thing at 6.30. Went around and sprayed the whole greenhouse just as a preventative. That'll be their last spraying of spinosad. They got one when they got attacked by thrips when they were young. I gave them a dose, but other than that... Nope, they haven't had any, just uh, just method one. So we'll hit them again with the method one. Um, but before we do any of that, let's check out the work we did yesterday in the greenhouse. And we'll see you here in a few minutes. All right, here's basically what I'm going to cut off. I want to cut off that point so that I don't have a point there where the plastic's going to wrap across the top of the ridge beam. So I'm literally going to take this little hand coping saw and I'm going to cut that off. I've got the GoPro. Sure, focus. You're supposed to focus. I've got the GoPro going down there, so... I'm going to turn off this camera because I'm kind of like uh, holding on with one hand standing on this cross member. All right, I'm going to get to cutting. Pipe saw, PVC pipe saw, cut that off at an angle, I'll sand that off, smooth that off, I'm going to route this edge here, 
and I should make it nice. Looking really smooth. Nice, nice quarter round on that all the way down. And I will come back here with a piece of sandpaper and probably go across this. There's a couple rough edges, but man, it won't take much. That looks good. Nice. I'll finish up the rest of this rail and then go around the back, do the other side. Wow, that was hot. That took a lot longer than I thought. I'm covered with wood chips. All right, let's look at this corner here. See what we did. Rounded this corner and I rounded this corner. Now this was the corner I'd taken off to go run back down to Home Depot and pick up some screws. And this was the corner my buddy, the builder, and my son took care of. And you see how these edges don't match up nice? But see, my buddy, the builder, he's thinking like a piece of plastic. Because let's say I'm a piece of plastic and I come down here over the edge and then I make this nice gradual little turn. And that's, that's beautiful. I thought I was going to have to fix that corner up, but that's just beautiful the way he was thinking like that. Now, let's go take a look at the other side. Okay, now this was the side that I was in charge of. Me, the salesman service guy by day, pot grower by, well, sometimes day and sometimes night. Look what I did. Now let's pretend you're a piece of plastic and you come chugging down this rail right here. All right. All right, <laughs> that was about the damn dumbest thing because I really kind of jacked up this corner because now there's no smooth transition. The plastic is going to come down here and it's going to shelf out. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cheat. I'm 
Now I'm going to have to work on shimming that up a little bit. I'll go out and pick up some shims, shim that up so that that's a much more gradual transition so that that plastic just kind of slides over the end rail. Then we won't have any problem. Once that's covered up by plastic, you won't see that uh, I'm a first class dumbass. So, other than that, everything is taken care of. Well, I hope you guys like some clips there of uh, working on the greenhouse. I uh, shot that yesterday with the GoPro. I hope the video turned out great. That's kind of the magic of doing this on YouTube. I actually am filming this right after I filmed the introduction, and I filmed what you just saw yesterday, and I'm trying to piece this all together. And I hope it turned out good, and I hope you liked it. Let's go take a walk around this greenhouse, and then let's go check out some Zario Locos and some Mendo Dopes. Busy, busy, busy. Like it says on this bucket, sit odd still. Let's do this. Uh, this is kind of ridiculously ridiculous as we walk around here. Um, I actually have a GoPro in my hand. This is a GoPro knockoff. So you can now see me looking at me with a GoPro. And I'm working with the phone as well, trying to get an idea as to which one of these cameras is going to work better. I have a feeling that the phone, they're both set at 720, uh, 60 frames uh, per second, but I have a feeling that the phone is going to take much better video. So, looking at the green ice, look at that. Green, nice green growth starting right up there at the top. I've mentioned this numerous times that this particular plant has trouble in veg. It's like it tweaks out from one deficiency symptom to the next, not knowing what to do. This is a 27-year-old strain that I've had. It's got five crosses in it, and it would be really nice if somebody could tissue culture this thing and bring it back to its original state. But I think what you're going to see me do is reset this thing hard. I'll grow out a couple clones. I'll grow them right out to six-footers. And then I'll clone them again, and I'll select the best one out of maybe six or a dozen, depending on how I decide to do it, and see if I can't get this thing to uh, behave again. God, man, the, the pot is so good off of that plant, it's not even funny. And this one's really intriguing, because this is a tester of the same green ice strain from the same bag that grew that one last year. Grew this one this year, and this thing looks straight up, like, right. It didn't, uh, it didn't auto-flower like some of the other females from last year's run. It didn't herm like some of the other females from last year's run. That's kind of intriguing, but I definitely have my eye on it, and I've got it in a 25-gallon pot, so... You know, if all hell breaks loose with this thing, we can jerk this out of here in a second. Green crack, being a beast. I'm actually going to come through here and plant some poles and uh, put up a trellis net. I need to. These things are getting huge. Nice looking plant. Gorgeous. Totally, totally figured out these no-till pots, and that thing is just flying. Oh, shit. You little... You are a dead man. See it? See it? Always vigilant. Always watching. Oh. Hold on a second while I, uh... Well... I'm going to continue to film, then he's going to die. Apparently, the spinach sad that I sprayed just two and a half hours ago did nothing to that guy. Or he doesn't care with the fact that it's there. Looking at the code black. 
Code Black 1. Very, very, very gorgeous plant. Nice, lush green. The second green crack. Also just stretching up in beast mode. Code Black 2. Man, thick stems on that thing. Look at that thing. Just gorgeous. My UK cheese. You definitely notice a difference in these plants between the last time that you saw them and today. They are just rocking. And look at my problem child, the five for five. Strawberry Super Male by Jurgen OG. It's actually sporting some green growth on it. Still got some brown spots there from the deficiency that it had, but man, coming back. Outstanding. This is the craziest leaf I have ever squished. Those leaves that you see down there, yesterday I broke some of these leaves off. The smell, oh my God, straight up. Straight up strawberries and fruit with a little pining. It's ridiculous. Crazy. I hope it carries over. I have no idea. My favorite plant in the whole greenhouse. The Code Black 3. Just a, just a, look at that structure. Man, gorgeous. Strong. Strong. Nothing is supported on that plant. It's totally supporting itself. And then back to my blue dream, which we're going to take some macros of in a few. The ninja fruit. Look at that photo, phototropic plant. Just bent to the sun. This leaf is ridiculously bent over. Cool. That thing is loving it. All right. Pretty cool. That's a walk through. Let's go check out some mendos. Well, that's the kind of response I want to see. Look at that. Phototropic. All of them bent towards the setting sun. Happy. Good. The sun's no joke either. Very cool. Just wanted to come out and check out on them. <laughs> check out on them. Check them out. Probably going to move them in in about, no, I don't know, half an hour or so. A little bit of stress here. A little bit of curled up leaf. But the rest of them, nice. God, I hope that's a female. That's a gorgeous plant. Big, fat leaves. Good grief, do they look good. Oh yeah, they love this. What do we got? Somebody came in and bit my leaf. Life in the outdoor. Socks. I hate to do it. Oh 
no, it's the wrong plant. Just kidding. All right. Well, that opens up that pot. I think I'm going to pop a couple of my little green ice. Uh, either a couple of my little green ices. Yeah. Two green ices. The little clones. I'll keep the best one for a mom, and I'll put the other two in here. Worm food. Hey, speaking of worm food, let's go work on a project. Say hi to the pretty horses. Morgans. Yeah. Uh-huh. Looks like compost, doesn't it? So we clean out the horse pasture. And we kind of pile it up over here. Anybody think that I'm going to have any problems whatsoever with fungus in this stuff? I don't think so. There are mushrooms all over the place in here. So we're going to take a little bit of this, and then we're going to take a little bit of the bedding from the chicken yard, and some rabbit manure, and we're going to make ourselves a new worm farm. All right, let me set this up. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to grab some of this. I'm going to start throwing it into this white cooler. Grab that mushroom. This has probably been sitting here now since, oh, I don't know, spring. This is going to make up the, the majority of my mix. Alright. Let's go into the chicken barn. Alright, so anybody with chickens who does a deep litter system is pretty familiar with this. Now, the first thing you notice when you look at all this bedding and Here's kind of the way this works. See, these rabbit cages are above the chicken yard. The rabbit droppings fall down. And the chickens scratch all this up. And we're just about at the end of the summer, generally around Labor Day weekend, we come through here and we clean this out. This is easily a foot thick of bedding 
and manure, totally a deep litter system. And you can see underneath their perch, that's a whole lot of crap. And there's feathers, and there's hay, and there's bedding. And anybody who has a worm farm or does any composting realizes this is gold. Just for the feather meal alone. This is one year's worth of deep litter bedding. And it's absolute gold. So I'm going to come in here with a shovel. I'm going to grab some of that. And I'm going to throw it in this bucket. And then we'll uh, go in and mix it up with the worms. All right, so we're making a new worm bed. And I'm going to make it in that cooler. And hopefully by the time winter rolls around, I'm going to have some fresh castings. I'm going to take the worms out of the blue tin and I am going to seed the new bin because those have been in there for a while. So what I'm going to do today is I've got my horse manure. I'm going to add my chicken bedding and the chicken manure to it. And I'm going to add some uh, kelp to it. Um, when I get a hold of some alfalfa meal, I will add that to it. I am going to add some of my comfrey to it when I pick some more comfrey. And then I think I'm going to look at a malted grain, and I'm either thinking barley or maybe even rye if I can find it. I'd like to try some malted rye, but that's going to be a new, brand new thing of worm castings for this winter, and then I'll top dress my pots with that. And between that and compost, the way I'm moving is compost, properly made compost, and worm castings, and I don't think I'm ever going to have to hit hit any of my gardens with another amendment at least that's the direction I'm headed um, and I think with some stuff I just picked up from uh, a couple times I heard Clackamas Coot and if you don't know who Coot is look him up but uh, I think this is totally doable so you're gonna see me moving that more that way that's more of a natural uh, more of a natural system so I'm gonna grab my shovel and I kind of took that chicken manure and I broke that up a little bit. And I'm going to take some chick shovelfuls and throw that in here. And then I'm going to mix that up. I know this looks disgusting, but this is absolute gold. Just for the feather meal alone. So high in nitrogen. You can't even buy stuff like this. All of that hay that the horses eat, they're totally grass-fed hay. The pasture is our own. The hay is grown right around the corner by a guy who uses absolutely nothing. It's all natural. The chickens all of their food. I picked that up from the Amish right around the corner. That's all natural as well. Kelp. Just going to kind of moisten that up just a little bit.
Then I'm going to pop the cover back on this, let this sit for a couple days until I get back to it. Because sorting out this worm bin is going to be a total day project in itself. That's going to be madness. So the bedding is set. All we need to do is add the worms and the other amendments. Oh, before we leave this, I figured I'd let you guys see this. Yeah. Coffee grounds, kelp, broccoli, comfrey. Watch this. See him? Look at all the babies. So I don't have to take very much of this stuff and put it in there to totally seed that whole entire farm. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of worms there are in that container, but I bought three pounds at the beginning of this season when I uh, had to re-amend my 45-gallon no-till pots. And I think I used two pounds, maybe a pound and a half, and just threw the others in there. So, look at this. The lady likes the fruit. Well, everybody's all back safe and sound. The Zaria Locos in the back. Man, it looks like they grew three inches today. Mando dopes, one through five up front, six through ten in the middle. And we've got our clones. Cheeses on the left. Code blacks in the middle. Green ices on the right. I'll tell you what, even here sitting in... Uh, in these little uh, solo cups. And Code Black still look better than the rest of them. Alright guys, it has been a long, long day. I am beat. It is about 10 to midnight right now. You guys know what to do. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm the Rascal Farmer. We'll see you guys right here next time in the No-Till Lab.